hello everyone this is part 3 of ASCII stations the question will be like this in the in this station like what is your diagnosis in this case this is hypopion pus in the interior chamber so the next question will be what are the causes of hypopion formation in the interior chamber number one is trauma number two is surgery Number 3 is end of thalmitis. Number 4 is silicon oil emulsi emulsified silicon oil in the interior chamber which will make a reverse hypopion that will be above. And uh, foreign body in the interior chamber which will lead to infection and uveitis. All these cases will present to you with hypopion how will you manage a case of hypopion because of the post surgical hypopion so the answer of that would be uh, intravitreal antibiotics parsplenoid vitrectomy topical antibiotics and uh, topical steroids cycloplegic eye drops so you will manage it like this so this is a case of hypopion now your next case is look at this picture this is hyphema this is hyphema the question will be uh, the first question will be diagnosis of this picture the diagnosis is uh, hyphema which if you uh, if you want to be very specific then you can say like it that it is a grade 1 hyphema the second question will be uh, grade uh, different uh, um, grade of hyphema so your answer will be grade 1 2 3 and 4 if the hyphema is less than less than one third of the interior chamber if we divide into four parts this is one this is two this is three and this is four so this is less than one third this is less than one third so this is grade 1 hyphema if the hyphema is like this if it is but more than one third but less than two third then it will be grade 2 hyphema okay like this this will be grade 2 hyphema and if we want to learn the grade 3 hyphema that would be like more than two third but less than more than two third but less than uh, 3 4 okay means more than half but less than full so this is your grade 3 hyphema then if it is full in the inti full in the interior chamber completely it is called grade 4 hyphema or this is called edible hyphema okay how will you manage hyphema? You will give anti-glaucoma medications, cycloplegic medications, and never give such medication which increases bleeding. Okay, and steroids eye drops. So these are all all the medication will be in the form of eye drops, and the complication of hyphema are two. Okay, number one is glaucoma. Glaucoma. Number two is endothelial staining endothelial corneal endothelial staining so these are the complication of hyphema this is your next stage 12 year old boy presented with small red nodule over the upper eyelid margin since last two days this is from two days he is complaining of severe ocular pain and headache what is your diagnosis this is a diagnosis of stia if there is pain and it's the uh, complaint is of the short history and it is on the margin of the eyelid then it is stia how would you manage it the management of stia is pull the eyelash which is which is uh, embedded in the past pustule area okay and then give uh, him anti oral antibiotics oral painkiller heart compresses and topical antibiotics so all these are the treatment of stia now we will go toward the next slide 
This uh, same swelling with 25 year lady present with painless nodule on the upper eyelid since last two months. This is from last two months and this is painless nodule. So these are the important things. Painless and this is last two months. Long history. What is this? This is basically your Kelazian. The diagnosis of this is Kelazian. Okay. Now. How will you manage the management of Kelazian if it is small? Then with simple massage, with warm compresses and massage, it can resolve by itself. And definitely, you will wash your eyelashes with Baby Johnson shampoo. So the pores of the meibonian gland will open up, and all the fat which is which is de uh, deposited over here will drain through the orifice of the meibonian gland. If it does not respond to this treatment, then we will do we have two treatment option one is intralesional triamcinolone or intralesional steroid injection and the second is surgical excision of the region through conjunctival approach okay so this is uh, your case of calazian now look at this uh, mm, instrument and give answers this is head mount indirect ophthalmoscope what are its function to see the fundus to see the retina using the retinal detachment surgery using the examination of children's in the OT and OPD and which lens is used in this uh, with this instrument there are two lenses three lenses sorry 20 diopter lens 28 diopter lens and 60 diopter lens okay these three lenses can be used with this instrument where, which is this this is basically a thalmoscope how many parts are there this is this one sorry this is uh, lens uh, uh, these are the lenses of a thalmoscope this is lens changing knob this is eyepiece this is eyebrow rest and this is handle and then that one is on off button okay so what are its function we can see through ophthalmoscope uh, after we can do ophthalmoscopy we can do pupil examination we can do interior chamber examination and this is an essential instrument in, uh, in ophthalmology okay look at this picture this uh, picture contain two finding this is hypopian small hypopian okay and this one is corneal ulcer how will you stain it? We, we can stain it with the rose bengal dye and with the fluorescein dye. And how will you manage? First of all, we will do scraping of the ulcer and send it for gram staining and culture sensitivity. And then topical antibiotics, cycloplegics. We can also give him intrastromal antibiotics, depend upon the case. Okay. So this is a case of corneal ulcer. Look at this picture and this is a case of preceptal cellulitis in children. Okay, preceptal cellulitis. All both both eyelids are swollen up in this case. This is involved eyelid and this one is because of the inflammation. Okay. So preceptal cellulitis, what is the treatment? We give oral augmentin, which is coemoxiclove, basically painkillers and we admit the patient how can we differentiate it from the orbital cellulitis with the help of extracular movements and uh, optic nerve examination so these are different treatment option for this uh, in exam um, you can get orbital cellulitis or preceptal cellulitis if you write it orbital cellulitis we will give you full marks and if you write it as a, as a preceptor cellulitis we will also give you mark in that case too because the treatment is almost same this is the case of uh, swollen optic disc uh, you can also write it as optic neuritis what are the different tests for uh, optic nerve function visual equity visual field color vision contrast sensitivity color, light brightness sensitivity and we can also do uh, visual fields okay so these are the different function of optic nerve 
and what are the different types of optic indurators so we can call it as a, uh, retinitis retrobulb optic neuritis okay and chorioretinitis this is a case of branch retinal vein occlusion what are the different complications of branch retinal vein occlusion this is all hemorrhages okay and this is temporal branch of the branch retinal vein occlusion so what are the complication complications include uh, macular edema and neovascular glaucoma how will you treat it we treat it with the uh, anti vgf and uh, pen retinal photocoagulation or laser okay this is a case of uh, uh, retinal detachment this is a u-shaped tear over here and this is the detached retina all over here okay this one is detached retina so what are the different treatment options for retina detachment we have two red do options one is external retinal um, detachment surgery which is also called scleral buckling and the second one is pars plana vitrectomy with silic uh, intraocular silicon oil into the vitreous cavity okay this is a case of sub highlight hemorrhage okay this is a case of sub highlight hemorrhage oh, and what are the differential diagnoses we, you can write in different conditions it can happen like in diabetic retinopathy Eagles disease etc and what is the treatment yog laser hyaladotomy we can do it over here over here in the base of uh, the subhyalad hemorrhage all the blood will come into the vitreous cavity and it will absorb slowly into the and in one or two months okay thank you so much